For our second little Excel stats demonstration, we're going to look at how to run a two-factor analysis of variance. This is a two-factor design because the replicates can be divided up into categories by two different factors. First of all, whether they're impact or control samples, and second, whether they come from impact site 1 or 2, or control site 1 or 2. OK, this is the page with the data. And for this analysis, I'm going to select just across to NumSpur. So I've got the status and site, replicate, depth, sediment, nutrient, hydrocarbon, and number of species columns selected with all of the samples. Now, for a two-factor analysis of variance, the option we need from Excel stats is one num to cat. So I'm going to click on that and the data will load into Excel stats. Again, nothing is showing up here in the graphs and up here we've got zeros. And again, I've got to select the right variables over in the columns on the left. So I'm going to start by switching this middle column to status. the next one to site and the first column will have the variable that I want to test hypotheses about. Remember an analysis of variance tests hypotheses about averages. So let's start by looking at hydrocarbon. Then we get some descriptions down here. Up here in the table it's showing a count of three and I can switch that to show means. So then we've got means for impact site 1 and 2 and control site 1 and 2. Switching over to the summaries page we've got a bar graph that shows average hydrocarbon levels at the two impact sites and the two control sites and clearly there's a difference between the impact and the control sites. To do the two-factor analysis of variance, we go over to the Tests page. And this is the table of the analysis of variance results here. But what we need to do is to tell Excel Stats to include the interaction term. So I check this box up here. Excel Stats is nice in that it gives us a description here in words of the null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis and underneath the p-values for testing those hypotheses. So we can actually go and look straight down at the bottom here. The first of the null hypotheses is that there's no interaction between status and site. The p-value there is 0.347 which is greater than 0 0.05, so that null hypothesis is accepted. Going down to the bottom null hypothesis here, it is that hydrocarbon levels don't depend on site. In other words, average hydrocarbons are the same at site 1 and site 2. p-value is 0.37, so we also accept that null hypothesis. The middle null hypothesis is, however, that hydrocarbon does not depend on status that is impact versus control. The p-value here is 0 0.000017. Remember that the e to the minus means that we move the decimal place that many places to the left. So this is 0 0.5017, much less than 0 0.05, so we can reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis that hydrocarbon levels depend on status. Now given the results plotted in the graph here that is in fact quite obvious but in other cases where there is more variability and a smaller difference between the factors or the levels of the factor we may need the analysis to give us some guidance.